Yo, yo, welcome on in everybody. I want to welcome you all back to a Faust Reviews. Today we're going to be talking about possibly the next, possibly it is the biggest show since Sopranos, Game of Thrones. This will be essentially the next, this is the next biggest show uh, to come out right now. And there's only been one episode, I believe, when this aired. This second episode would be on um, 10 days after, so keep an eye out for it. I just wanted to go ahead and talk about The Penguin because this show is phenomenal. If you haven't seen it yet, I strongly, strongly recommend you go watch this show. You won't be disappointed. You will be hooked right from the beginning. You will be hooked right from the beginning scene. What I love about this show and what other shows fail to do today is to give us a character a complex character, give them good scenes, give them good writing, give them good build-up, give them good arcs, give them everything a great story needs. And this movie has it all. This movie has great scenery, this movie has great dialogue, this movie has just great everything. Even if you want to go into the prosthetic, this might win an, win an award for best prosthetic and we're going to go into it some more, but I just want to talk about this movie because, or this TV show, sorry, I'm saying movie. This TV show is phenomenal. This should have been a movie, honest to God. I'm liking this more than the Batman movie so far. The Penguin character is so unique and so much different than we've gotten in the past. And we're going to go through a couple characters. I have a couple screenshots here that we'll go through. But uh, I'll go through this this first episode. So we, we start the episode off with, um, I think it's Maroney, right? The head crime boss dying. And, um, sorry about that. One sec, guys. I'm pretty sure it's either Falcone's kid or Maroney's kid. I can't remember which one, but I will as the episodes go on, I guarantee you. He, so the one, his father died, and the person that's left to run the business is his son, okay, and his son's got his father's ring on, or is actually the ring of another crime boss that we'll get to, and he's sitting there, and the penguin's trying to convince the son, the son's all distraught, he doesn't want to do drugs, but he is a drug addict, he wants to kind of play it straight, and they're kind of talking back and forth. And the penguin is really doing this. He wants him to drink. Hey, alcohol is not a drug. Because he wants to get information out of him. And sorry guys, spoilers moving forward. Because everything's about to pop off. So, him and the penguin are talking. And the penguin tells him what, what kind of man he should be. But in reality, the penguin's talking about himself. And you guys will see this play out. And the kid laughs at him. Bad move, kid. You don't laugh at this guy. <laughs> he might look like, uh, you know. But, uh, yeah, I would not fuck with this guy. With a fucking million yard stick, okay? I wouldn't fuck with this guy at all. He might limp and look like a chump. But he ain't, dude. And that's what I love about him. We've had other portrayals in the past of the Penguin where he's been kind of a quivery loser type thing until his arc comes through and he manages to be kind of the badass, but he's still not really a badass, you know, he still hides away, this and that, and tries to always get away. But what I love about Colin Farrell's character is it's just, man, he just lets it loose right there. The kid makes fun of him, he thinks about it for a second, pulls out his gun, boom, 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 and the kid's dead, and he laughs, he laughs about it. He laughs right there about what he just did, but then after he's done laughing, he's like, oh, shit, because he realized he just killed the boss's kid. Now he's got to dispose of the body, right? And there's this whole funny scene of him getting the body into the thing and trying to get the body to his car, and um, I believe when he gets out to his car, there's these kids trying to steal his tire, and he shoots at them, and the one kid he chases down, he manages to chase down, believe it or not, and the kid, um, the kid's got a stuttering problem. And so he kind of takes him under his wing because he sees the defect in this kid that he once had as a kid. And maybe, you know, maybe these two can get along. Maybe he wants to just wants his kid's help so he can eventually kill this kid. We don't know, but we do find out in, you know, later of this episode, this kid gets him out of a, a lot of shit. So that he helps with the body and then the sunset's coming up 
And he says, and when they're on a drive to dispose of the body, he should tell him the kid, he just murdered somebody. The kid knows it. The kid helped him load it into his car. And he's like, hey, kid, you like this air freshener? It's a good air freshener. Aqua. And then he, his character is so elaborate. It's so, it's just, it's, it's, it, he's having so much fun with this role. And you can just tell, like, Colin Farrell was built for this. And Danny DeVito had to go and tweet out, I'm the best penguin ever. Danny DeVito, I don't know about that, bro. You were good, man. I love you for a very long time. No one's done it better, except maybe, no, I don't know. But we're going to get to that. The guy in Gotham was pretty good. But there hasn't been many characters, unless they're animated, that have pulled it off as much as Colin Farrell did. And he didn't put any weight on for this role. When you guys see this man, that is all costume design. He is still Colin Farrell, the skinny Irish guy. He did not put on any weight for this role whatsoever. You can watch the behind the scenes at the end of the episode. So anyway, um, they get to the junkyard where they're going to dispose of the body. We're not really disposed. I just keep it there for a little bit. And the sun sunrise is coming up and the penguin tells, says to the kid that he got, Hey kid, look at that sun sunrise. It's going to be a beautiful day. And he, the kid doesn't turn around because he knows if I turn around, I'm dead. So he begs him, please, he's got this stutter. Please don't kill me, sir. I'll do whatever, I'll do whatever. And finally, the penguin kind of gives in. Ah, maybe there is use for this kid. So he keeps the kid around. He takes the kid to his mom's house. And this is great. We get to meet the penguin's mom right off the rip, which I absolutely love. She's a huge part of the story. She might not be around for a very long time, um, but that's okay because that's going to help with the penguin's arc. And as you can see in the poster here, it says the city will be his. So we all know this is leading up to for the Penguin to take over Gotham, pretty much, to be the number one crime lord. And I, this is just, I can't wait because I now I want to get these other Batman movies in with Pattinson, but I just want them to bring it all kind of together and wrap it all up in kind of one nice bow, you know? I don't want just like a Penguin show about the Penguin, and then we're going to have the Batman movies, and we're not even going to mention the Penguin in that movie while well, we did in the first one, but have something completely different in the second movie, make it about the Joker, no, 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 no. You gotta, you gotta fit all this in somehow. You gotta finesse it. Do what Marvel couldn't do with D+. Okay? That's a message to James Gunn, number one. Number two, Penguin gets to his mom's house. He goes in with the kid, and the kid just stands there. The mom has no idea that he brought this kid along. And the way him and his mom go back to each other is just freaking phenomenal. And the mom's trying to tell him what he do, what he do. And uh, he says he killed somebody. And then the mom says, why? Why did you kill somebody? Or why did you kill? And he tells him, he tells his mom who, who he killed. And she goes, because you're a pussy boy. You're a pussy boy. And she starts smacking him. And, gets, and then she freaks out because the kid is there. And she has no idea who this kid is. And he says, it's okay, mom. It's okay. Like, it's, he's with me. He's with me. And he's going he's gonna to be here to protect you. He's going he's gonna to watch over you like a nurse. <laughs> This is great. This show is, it like I, I've never laughed so hard and enjoyed myself so much in a mob style show. I don't even think I did that much in Sopranos. Sopranos had some funny moments. Let, let's let's be real, but this this is just this the writing. And then you can and at the end of the show, you can see the writers and everyone who was involved with this. Just they understand the lore. They under they know the knowledge of what they're working on. They are experienced writers who have been in the business for a long time. You can see it in their age. And they're not checkbox hires, right? Like, I hate to say that, but they're not just, oh, you're diverse. We're going to hire you. Well, you're going to hire me for a Penguin show, but I have no writing credits. Oh, it's okay. It doesn't matter. You don't need to know about that. Just like Marvel did with Captain Marvel movie. They hired, what, Nika De what was that woman's name? Nika DaCosta, whatever, for Captain Marvel movie. She had no idea she's calling the Shang-Chi guy up. He didn't even make a great movie. And she's asking him for pointers about what is this character? What does she do? What are her motivations? Like, that is not how you go about making these projects. That is where Marvel failed. And I can see that now they're firing all those people because they don't have any credits to their name. I don't know why you'd hire them in the first place. Like, why would you hire the She-Hulk writer in the first place? I don't understand it. Hire somebody who understands and loves this shit, dude. They live for it. They want to see it succeed just like the fans do. And that's where the money's at. And it, everybody wins. I just don't get why we've gone down this road of let's make trash rings of power and not have the fans love it. 
if you would have made something the fans love the Lord of the Rings fan and it has all these callbacks to it and the Lord of the Rings fans adored it, it would have made billions. You would have made money. You could have finished all these seasons. But no, Rings of Power is a disaster. It's going to fail, just like all these other shows failed. And it's sad. So, yeah, that's pretty much the episode. I mean, there's a couple more things that happen. Penguin uh, leaves there and he tries to go back to the girl that he gave an alibi to for the for the night he killed the mob boss and his car was seen well first whoa whoa whoa, let me back up he goes to the mob house because they call him in be right because and they don't even you think he's getting called in because the mob's son's uh, boss's son's dead and the boss is dead too he's not around because we found that out in batman but no he goes to the mob house because they want him to close up shop because of the floods from batman movie if you guys haven't seen the batman movie go see it spoiler alert and um, I already said that, though. So he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're, we're bringing in the drops. The drops is like this new drug they got going. We're bringing, the mo we're bringing all the money in. I got the biggest warehouse in the city. And we, we recovered, you know, 30%. But he says they recovered 75%. And when he killed the mob boss kid, the kid told him something. The kid said, yo, I, we, got this big we got this new drug coming. It's going to revolutionize the drug game. And the penguin, not knowing, says that. To the, to the bosses, not knowing the boy's sister he killed, the boss's son, he had a sister, and she's out of Arkham Asylum now. I forget her name. I wish I had all these names written down and looked up, but I will next episode. And she overhears that. She doesn't jump on it right now or say anything about it in front of the bosses. She actually takes the penguin to a dinner, then mentions it to him. And then later when he drives by, his, you know, he they, they kind of know what's going on. They're kind of playing that game, playing between the lines, him and her. And um, he tries to go to the apartment to warn the girl that he gave the alibi to because she knows. She said that there was witnesses that have seen your purple freaking car because it is. it is It's a ridiculous car, but I love it. And, um, yeah, so he flees. She sends her men after him. There's like a little parade or something going on. He stops his car and they think he hopped out and got into the crowd. But uh, he really just got into his trunk. He must have like a secret hatch in his car. And then he gets, and then a guy points a gun right at him when he finally gets back in the driver's seat. And he just slams his hand in the car, slam, slams his body into the door a couple times, gets out of there. But then I forget, I forget what happens. How does he get? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They do catch him there. Another, the girl comes this time after he does that and tries to get away. And they take him. And they torture him. And it's brutal. They strip him naked. They sit him in a metal chair, right, all bound up. And they take a fishing wire, right? And his hand is taped to the chair. And they put the wire under his armpit and pull upward, right? Imagine that. Imagine putting fishing wire around your arm, underneath your armpit, and then pull, and having someone pull straight up on it. Trying to, like, cut your arm in half, right? Oof, man, it, Oh man, it was it was brutal, but this is why it was great because he told the kid, "Look, you know where we put that body? I need you to go get the body, chop the head off and chop the finger off, right? And keep the ring. Give me the ring. I'm going to do something with the ring. I'll tell you guys what he does with that and send the body to the house." And he just so happens to be getting tortured at her house. This is the psycho girl from Arkham. This is the boss's son's sister. Um, so what he does with the ring is he goes to, I think it's, I think it's Maroney. And I think the family's Falcone family. He goes to Maroney or something, something along those lines. It's one of, one of these. And the guy in prison hates the penguin and hates the other family. But the penguin, before he leaves, like they, they're not going to work with each other at all. But the penguin says, I don't want to work with you. Gives you my business and this and that. And, um... He's like, no, I'm not going to do anything. He's like, oh, yeah, I forgot one more thing. Sal, I'm pretty sure it's Sal Maroney. And he takes the ring out and he puts it on the table. And he's like, how did you get this? And he's like, I told you. I, I got my ways or whatever, you know. And uh, it's freaking brilliant. And so um, he leaves and then he gets caught. Then he gets tortured with the wire. And then the kid sends the car. You hear a burn. You hear like the horn go off and the car crash into something. Everyone's like, what is it? And you just, they pan back to the penguin, naked on the chair, armpit bleeding from the wire, smiling. Smiling with those gold teeth, bro. It is. Like, because he knew it was going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen. We just see him smiling. And we're like, what the, what the hell is he smiling at? And you see the brick, you see the car that they put the kid in, the brick on, like a cinder block on the gas pedal, 
So someone put it there and put it there. And there was a message drawn into the kid. The kid obviously didn't chop the guy's head off. He just chopped the guy's finger off of her brother. So now she sees a message onto the body and she sees his finger missing with his ring. So she definitely now, since she had the penguin, thinks this is a mob family. This is someone else. This isn't the penguin. And dude, he, the way the penguin can play, like both sides, is just phenomenal. You, you think he's in so much trouble and you're like, wow, he just got out of it. Oh, brilliant freaking plan. Dude, that was, that was genius. I couldn't even think of that. Like, and that's how smart these writers are. That's why I love this show. It's just like, wow, it's it's fresh. It's new. It's oh, it's great, guys. It's great. So if you haven't seen this show, I highly recommend it. Now I'm going to talk about a couple more things, and then we're going to get out of here. Um, I just want to go through the makeup of Colin Farrell. This is Colin Farrell. I can't believe this is Colin Farrell without putting on any weight whatsoever, anything like that. Just unfreaking believable. We're going to go through the comic book of what I think they're going, they're doing in the show. They're going to get a little bit more darker. We're going to get a, a, a little bit more of a badass penguin. And I feel like we're getting this version of Cobblepot. I feel like we're getting this penguin. Because it's dark. It's gritty. You know, he's a, he's a badass. And I like that. Here's the other two penguins I adore. One is from the Gotham show. I don't know if you guys have seen that. It's a great, great show. Um, they teeter on the lines because they can't say the Joker and they can't do this, but it's a Batman show for sure. It's just Bruce Wayne's a kid, but he's actually goes through his training, training with Ra's al Ghul's parents die. You see all that, right? You see what happens to Bruce from his, you know, when he's a kid, when he's 10 years old to when he's 18. So it's, it's a phenomenal show and they have the Penguin, the Riddler, and they have all these characters in it. Mad Hatter, Scarecrow. It's a great show. And I thought he was phenomenal. I, th I didn't like him at first. But man, when he turns into the penguin, it's 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 golden. And he limps over and hits him with the umbrella. And then the yeah, other one's Danny DeVito, phenomenal character. One of my favorites for the for years until Colin Farrell came out with his. I loved him in the Batman movie, but man, this show is like a chef's kiss. It even represents him even better. And here is that character from Gotham. I mean, that is comic book esque penguin right there. You can't you guys can't ask for better if you're comic book fans. And then we're gonna go through a list here. And you know what's not here? Is that bullshit female penguin they put in the Batman Caped Crusade movie. I cannot believe some people actually like that pile of dog trash. Like a female penguin? What are we even doing? Are we doing a what if? Like how can you even call that caped? What? I don't even know. I'm, I'm done with it. I'm not watching it. I'm watching the penguin. But in the, yeah, my mind, these, these are some of the... These are some of the good, one of the best penguins, especially like the 1992 cartoon, the 1960s penguin. And the 1960s penguin, he's a fun penguin, right? And what I love about Colin Farrell's penguin is they kind of stopped with that. They're like, look, we had the 60s, the 90s, right? The early 2000s where he starts to get a little bit more menacing. We need someone serious, gritty, dark. It's the DCEU. Let's go. And this is what I wanted from Marvel. I wanted Marvel to go dark. I've been saying it for a while. Stop with the campy humor, Marvel. Like, you can put the humor in where it fits. Just like just like with this show, they did that, right? But you have to stop with the campiness. You, you just have to stop it. You gotta stop with the bullshit humor. It's, it's, it's... Like the goats laughing in Thor and just everything else. It's like, oh, it's so tiring. Can we get a serious Marvel movie? I'm going to make another video about that. I, I'm going to give my thoughts on Doomsday. What I think should happen. I think that instead of Tony Stark finding Peter Parker, right? And wanting to, wanting to bring him back in the old Avengers movie. It was Avengers um, Endgame. From Infinity War when Peter got dusted. I think in this one. If he's doomed but he's really Tony. He needs to. Kill Peter Parker. And they need to find a speedster. Or somebody to, to a way to bring back. Bring him back. And that breaks doom in a way. And it just gives you character. And it just gives you. They have. You know. We're not going to tap into the feelings thing too much. But family in that aspect. Fatherhood. And you know, how, t how Peter looks at him as a father. And I have a whole thing written down on that. But we're going to get into that some other time. I did want to do this Penguin Breakdown, guys. This is a phenomenal freaking show. 
I'm telling you, if you watch this show, you'll be hooked in the first two minutes. It's Sopranos meets Batman. It's it's freaking amazing. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.